Hi everybody, Dan Litwin here again, and welcome back to Tuesday Tips for Leaders of Volunteers. This week, talking about how to prioritize tasks. And I've done something similar a little while ago on time management, which has a little bit different system. So maybe you can combine these two videos together and really succeed in not feeling overwhelmed with your workload. I think prioritizing tasks into daily, weekly, and monthly priorities is very important. You can choose to do it quarterly or yearly if you have very, very long-term goals and or things that are tied to your agency's strategic plan or mission pillars, of course, but at least start with daily, weekly, and monthly. I have a technique that I love to call concrastination. It's like concentration and procrastination put together. And it's especially effective if like me, you can be a little bit easily distracted or if you're, you have ADD or other neurodivergence where it's, it's harder to focus in longer periods of time, then chunk out 10, 20, 30 minutes, maybe even use a timer or an alarm on your phone to move between three or four different things in an hour. And sometimes that works for me. Uh, I also know a lot of friends and colleagues who do better with a chunk of time, like an hour or two in hyper focus, and they just want to do it all in one chunk. The key to either of those techniques, concrastination or longer hyper focused chunks of time to get things done is to block time on your calendar. We joke and meme a lot about oh, we're having meetings about meetings, but it's a very real problem these days, especially for leaders of volunteers. If you have so many meetings in the day that it feels like, or the week that you can't get your real work done and you don't want to push too hard into overtime and trying to work, work at home after hours and things like that, that cause burnout. So be, give, give, be a good, uh, boss to yourself and your team and offer and model chunking out time on your calendar where you are not to be disturbed and no one books a meeting with you unless it's a, an absolute emergency and you can just concentrate for that amount of time, whether it's one hour a day or a three hour chunk on a certain day of the week or a couple days a week, uh, whatever you can get away with, give yourself the gift of blocking out time on your calendar to get things done. That's very helpful. The four commonly used levels of prioritizing tax, tasks are high priority. These are tasks that are urgent or critical to mission success or their deadline is coming up very fast or it, everything will fall apart without this getting done. They typically have tight deadlines or immediate consequences if not addressed promptly. High priority tasks require immediate attention and should be tackled first. Medium priority tasks are very important, but just maybe not, not as urgent, not as much of an emergency as high priority tasks. And they still need to be addressed, but maybe have a little more flexibility on deadlines or the deadline is a little bit further out or there's not as serious consequences if there's a delay. And this might be something that yeah, someone else is waiting for you to do your piece before you hand it off, but they've got plenty of work to do. So if you get it to them, you know, if you stretch the deadline a little bit, things won't completely fall apart as long as you communicate that really well. Low priority tasks are less urgent and or have lower consequences if the completion is delayed. They're typically less mission critical uh, to a project or a goal success and can be addressed after completing the high, very urgent high priority or medium priority tasks. Low priority tasks can also be deferred or delegated, whether that delegation is to other paid staff members in your team of leaders of volunteers. And also I'm a big fan of delegating certain tasks to volunteers, not necessarily only low priority, but that's usually the easiest to clear off your plate and delegate to someone else on the team first. Uh, if you have a trusted team member, whether they're paid or unpaid, talk to them about delegating certain things uh, as they come up that fit their skill set. And then there's the ultimate distraction, which is something that is optional, nice to have, not a big priority. Uh, but, and these can be tricky because 
I have a habit of if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just to feel a sense of accomplishment, uh, I can add something to my to do list that I've just done or I'm about to do and then immediately check it off and have a fantastic brain chemical moment of like, yay, I accomplished this. That's fun to give yourself that little gift when you have time once in a while. Just don't make it constantly optional fun, fun for my brain things to do, taking over from these high priority or medium priority or even low priority tasks. The other thing about something that's optional is if somebody hands it to you, you may think um, or mistakenly think that that becomes the new priority. And sometimes uh, people's brains work that way where the thing that's right in front of them is the highest priority. But just take a step back, check in with the person who is asking for this and say, hey, when when is the drop dead deadline for this? Can I get this to you? a little bit later when I finish these other tasks. So again, communicating to other people who are involved or to take over this project or pieces of it when you're done, that's super important. If you want to address kind of assessing the characteristics of how to prioritize things, because sometimes it's hard to say what priority does this fit into, think about it in these terms. Identify and define criteria. So determine the criteria that will be used to assess priority levels or tasks. And the easiest one is time. What's the closest deadline? And it could be, is this something that your boss has very immediately asked for and it's a high priority to someone else or they can't get another piece of this project done until you finish this? That might help you prioritize that. And you can also assess task characteristics, like evaluating these characteristics of each task to determine uh, things like deadlines, dependencies, impact on project goals, and available resources. It's perfectly fine to say, I don't have time to do this. And another good conversation to have or how to communicate your priorities is to say, you know what, my, my cup is full right now. If you want me to do this, something else has to go. And so that helps other people, whether that's your boss or other teammates assess, like how, how important is this? Is it feel urgent because it's someone else's priority or does this genuinely fit into your medium or low priority considering everything else you have that they're not thinking about it. Uh, and again, just communicate and update people on your progress as you go along. Uh, take action if something does fall between the cracks. Make sure that there's fairness and accountability instead of blame and shame. Blame and shame never uh, really help teams work better together. So, you know, setting up accountability and support around all of these tasks is, is important. And then just monitor and adjust, kind of just check in with people. Um, I have another Tuesday Tips Plan, Do, Check, Act, which is kind of a great system cy cycle to get into around this type of thing. And also, you know, use color coding, use numbering, use sound cues or different alarm for things, kind of adjust your priority task list according to what your learning style is, or if you have any neurodivergent tips or tricks and shortcuts that have helped you uh, before with your workload. So I hope you enjoy these Tuesday tips. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't already, share these with your friends and colleagues, and we'll see you next week with more tips. Take care.